Hey guys, I've got a Clash of the Titans for you today. This is a 60 grassy game between Siggy or Sigtinius, who's the most well-known player on Arcanus, and um, Strength Power DX, or Stir Power DX as I like to call him, uh, who needs no introduction, and he won't correct me on the pronunciation because he has no time to watch my videos, which is fine. Anyway, um, we'll see how this game goes. DX, I believe, is running his Ritual book. I actually played this book a while back, and it was really OP. He played it very well. It was a great game, really back and forth. Came down to just a few small mistakes in the end uh, that determined the victory. So, um, also Siggy, it looks like is running a mega book because he's got mud mud ball there. I won't reveal anything else that he has quite yet. So he gets a really expert flash there. You noticed, you know, I've had a guide on how to glide a, uh, flash a glided player, right? And he was able to do it from a distance and get him on the side of the map, so really great play there. Um, and now DX is relegated to that side of the map for the entire rest of the game, pretty much. Which is pretty bad for him. Siggy now has complete top map control. He can summon minions, do whatever he wants. Um, DX doesn't have many aerials in this book, you know, it's a ritual book. He's got Snare, you know, Wolf, or does he have Wolf in this, in this book? I don't, I don't know if he does. I don't think he does, but long story short, he doesn't have any aerials, right? So Sleeky's able to get a free swarm out. And DX is just like, you know what, I don't want him to push me, I'm going to summon a snare. And it, they're just going to keep growing eventually when turn 4 comes around, which we're now past turn 4, he can start ritualing stuff and go from there. DX will have to figure out some way to get back up top, regain some map control, right? He can't just stay down there, otherwise he's going to lose. One of his options was to just start Ferocious Striking. It has a huge AoE now that he ritualed it, so it's basically a flash. And he can just Ritual Strike, uh, not Ritual Strike, Ferocious Strike all the way up to the top of the map. So, pretty neat strategy there, and Siggy's gonna do the same, except with this totem. Just slowly dig away, you know, chip away at the land, and make his way toward DX. Uh, so he does what I said, he's just gonna continue to dig with the strike. Um, you may think, oh, what does that do for him? Well, again, does he really have anything that he can do? First of all, he needs space to summon his minions, right? Um, which I am pretty sure this mix has wolf and bear. Because if you have ritual, and you want to use ritual, it can be helpful to ritual a wolf or ritual a bear. Um, but we'll see exactly. It's been a while since I've actually played this book, so... Um... Siggy's just going to go with the rush strat and just pebble down. He knows that if he can detower DX and his tower's down, he doesn't have a lot of options because he can't fly out. Which is definitely accurate, right? Um, DX wants to put his swarm in the snares so Siggy can't kill it. Makes a lot of sense. And he traps the swarm in with himself. At this point, I'm thinking, you know, if I'm Siggy, probably just pebble down again, right? There's no reason to like wait on Totem to dig to him. Um, because right now DX only has one minion out and it's a swarm. And the swarm, although swarms are crucial, it can't really do too much. Because, you know, Siggy can use a Totem, can use the Pegasus to absorb the aura from the swarm. And also, if he's able to detower, he can absorb the swarm's aura on the following turn, as you guys just saw. So DX is going to do some really nice laddering here, get all the way up to the top, get find a little home in that tree there, and kill Siggy Swarm with the snare. This is great because he can empower those snares soon if he hasn't already, I don't think he has, and then that discourages Siggy from trying to 
push him at all. Uh, Siggy tried to go for the cheesy abduction play and maybe get DX down into the hole here and go for a flash sink or something. Doesn't quite work out, so he just has to say, eh, let me just run away and develop a minion right. Not too bad. Um, he positions the totem well, like I said. Uh, the swarm's not much of a threat because he can block the swarm with the minions and the aura will just be absorbed. DX, again, uses his minions to his advantage to increase his mobility, which is something that's pretty important when you're running a flightless book and not something that many new players find very intuitive. Uh, you can use your minions to ladder yourself around, elevator, and really increase your mobility. Obviously if your minion is a flying minion, you're just you know acting as if you have flight yourself, but even with ground minions you can hop on a ground minion to jump to a spot that was previously you know inaccessible, or you know, you can even help elevator minions with other minions. You know, jump a dark knight onto a wolf. And maybe that is just enough to jump the dark knight up over like a tree branch or something to get to your opponent. Small, subtle things like that. That kind of showcase that mobility is really important. Again, especially with these no flight books. Uh, he doesn't quite position his, his uh, totem right there, but it doesn't really matter because he can kill the swarm next turn anyway. And as soon as I say that I realize, oh, DX actually mushroomed the swarm so that it doesn't die, so a really smart play on his part. Uh, you might think intuitively, oh, you just use mushrooms to heal yourself. It's actually a mushroom spawns a little summon circle and you can heal a minion in, within a certain radius so that now he can keep his swarm alive for several turns because of the mushroom so really cool play out of DX here um, Siggy's just spamming the pebbles again he knows DX doesn't have a lot of mobility and he's got a hundred prop which is massive at some point um, DX will want to uh, spear Siggy with the empowered spear, possibly get that 95 damage, which is huge. Um, he tried to fit that swarm past the totem, didn't quite work, so instead he brings his swarm back, mushrooms it, and then hides it. Uh, maybe he has already ritualed everything that he can. No, maybe it was an option then to empower spear. Unless he has in mind that he wants to empower another spell. Right. Because you can only empower three if you don't have the full familiar. You can only empower three spells. So. But an option there was maybe to ritual the spear and then deflight. Or get really close to deflighting Siggy. Because he had a hundred prop. You could have deflighted him with the swarm the following turn, right? Um, because. He has 100 prot, you hit him with a 95 sphere, he has 5 left. Um, DX now has to side hide, and he does a really great glide placement here. Again, as I point out in my tutorials, you notice that he can't go all the way up to like this castle or this tree, he's just not going to glide all the way down. He has to um, glide from a pretty far distance, and something that you can do to kind of make it easier to get down to that side is jump from a minion like a pegasus as you saw there so really cool thing that you can apply a strategy that you can apply in uh, your own 60 grassy games if you use glide a lot I like to so um, Siggy's going for the aggro play jumps over the pegasus and maybe he wants to pebble down does he have flight again if he does then it might be game over but I don't think he does so okay he just decides to go for the aggro play control the movement of DX's Pegasus, trap it, right? And at this point, that Pegasus can get down? No, I don't think it can get down with that tree there. Um, so DX still sort of safe for now, but he knows that Siggy's flight, back, flight is coming back soon. So he trees him, right? Um, 
Any turn that DX can stall helps him out. He's going to want to tower at some point, maybe damage his blood bank a bit. Now, why would he want to damage his own minion? Well, blood bank is really valuable uh, because when it gets hit and it gets damaged, uh, it heals the, the user, so the owner of that minion. Okay, so now he empowers the spear, and as we're kind of seeing this game unfold, I'll take this opportunity to say that uh, about 25% of you guys are subscribed, so if you could please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy my content. Um, drop a comment, any feedback, or you know, criticism, whatever you guys want to say, uh, feel free. I'm happy to interact with all of you guys. I read all the comments, and you know, really appreciate all the support you guys have been given, so... Yeah, if you could please like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. <clears throat> so, Siggy decides to summon a totem. Uh, perhaps this is a book that doesn't have a tower. So he's saying, okay, I'm just going to slow play this a bit, right? Uh, there's no reason to rush. The X is at the bottom of the map. He has nowhere to go. Two of his minions are ground minions, wolf and bear, right? Um, I believe wolf is the level one for bear. Let's see. Yeah, so, you know, ground minions don't really help here, right? Because he's got limited space. Bank, wolf, bear, the only flight minion he has is swarm right now. So DX can't do much of anything. Siggy's, not, Siggy's saying, you know what? I'm not going to go for a hugely aggro play, right? There's no reason to. Um, I can just do a flight. I've got 60 prod. I can pebble down real calm, smooth, easy. And DX will try to use any minions to sort of body block. Um, block the pebbles a bit. Whatever he can to just prolong the game, right? Anything that helps him do that will help him secure a draw, or maybe even a victory if Siggy does make a mistake. So you'll notice there's this whole you know, conglomeration of pegs right here, of pegasum as I like to call them. And we'll see who that favors, you know, in the long run. Siggy just kind of, you know, kind of spamming pebbles here. It's really not rocket science what he's able to do, uh, and the reason he's able to just kind of sit up atop on his throne and just spam pebbles is mainly because um, he knows that DX doesn't have flight, he's really limited in his mobility as I've been saying. So um, The reason Siggy trees there is just so that uh, there's a chance that this swarm, when he moves it up to hit the pegasus, it stacks and maybe undeads that pegasus. He, he just doesn't want to give Siggy or give DX any chance to undead any of those pegasus there. And so that's why he treed, just so that the swarm aura would be absorbed. Um, and look how it turned out for him. Now he's got two soon to be three undead pegasi. Uh, I mean pegasum. It's pegasum. Um, <laughs> so, I mean... DX clearly in a completely winning position here with a huge minion advantage and... No, I'm just kidding, he's not. DX is losing. He's losing, ladies and gentlemen. So now how does Siggy win here? What does he do? Well, he can once again pebble spam. He can play it a bit slower and just let his totem dig to DX. Um, he has 35 turns nearly to win, and he can take his time. Why can he take his time? Because of what I just said, he has 35 turns. Again, just because DX has a sub-optimal position, and you know it looks like Siggy is completely winning, it doesn't mean that you're going to win in the next three turns. It could still take 20, 30 turns. Also, look at this play. He just abducted his Dark Knight. Oh my gosh. That is serious BM. Like, oh. The absolute disrespect. 
Siggy just goes down there with no regard for human life and just abducts his Dark Knight into the water. Jesus Christ. He probably was like licking his lips when DX uh, summoned that Dark Knight there. And DX probably like angry, yelling at his computer. You guys know that meme of that kid who has that giant vein? And, you know, he's constipated or whatever. And this just giant vein on his head is showing. That's DX in that moment, just like, you know, superheated, probably yelling at the top of his lungs, like, God damn it, I messed it up, he abducted my DK, so cheese, you know, and he's just talking to, to himself, you know, no one's in his room, no one's in his house, no one's in his area code, um, no one's in any of his, any of his seven mansions that he has, it's just him, and he's just yelling, he's yelling at his computer, like, oh my gosh, how could I let Siggy you know, abduct my DK into the water. He's such a scrub. How do I let Sigtinius of all people do this to me? So, as I said several turns ago, Siggy's just like, you know what? I don't need to pull out any more advanced strats against someone like DX. I can just pebble. It's so easy. I can do this in my sleep. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh... DX is an incredibly resilient player somehow able to just defend so well and pull out some, some of the most like unique micro level plays um, that keep him in the game and that really help him stall and he shows that there with the ice shield and the gate um, in a completely losing position he's able to make something out of nothing squeeze water from stone as the expression goes right so, what have I been saying all game? Spam Pebble! Oh, would you look at that! And, uh, what's Siggy's win con here? Well, he's got one Mega Bowler left, he's got three Undead Pegasum, and... don't remember if he pulled his DK out yet. I don't think he did. The problem for DX here is, again, early on, he got stuck um, on the side of the map because Siggy did this epic flash, right? And so the only advice I'd have for DX is just watch your positioning there. You know, when you summon the bank, he was able to flash the bank off and flash DX off, which just, you know, that's going to just make a DX's life easier. He's not completely lost or anything at that point, but... A lot of the tools that you have in your ritual book, they, you know, kind of require you to be up at the top of the map to be most effective. And if you're not at the top of the map able to kind of be in earshot of your opponent, then it's, it's really difficult. It's difficult to gain any sort of advantage. So Siggy decides to invest his second Mega Boulder here, which is probably a good play. Although, one thing I don't agree with is he just positioned his Pegasus a little bit uh, poorly there. And maybe could have used two of them to, to block that hole there, that side. Maybe one down here and then move this Pegasus over to the, to the left a little bit. Just to prevent DX from being able to go all the way over to this right side, or left side I mean, and continue to stall. Um, you see now, it's a little bit irritating for Siggy, he has to go all the way to the other side of the map, and do, guess what, Pebble, do what he's been doing for the last 500 turns. In fact, he doesn't even need to Pebble here, he can just get all the way down to DX and damage him. What does he have, though? He used his second Mega, right? So, is he gonna drain? No Ice Shield, I think. He does have Mud Ball, which is an option. Maybe he has Abduction here? He can trap him? Okay, he moves the Pegasus away. Oh, Siggy just Q's there. Was that a Q?
That was a Q. Yeah, I remember this now. Siggy so just had an unfortunate Q, and uh, DX was able to spear him, D flight. He doesn't really have any options left, right? Um, and Siggy makes a great play again with abduction. It's really hard to predict that the plays that your opponent can make with abduction, because you know it's hard to play around. It's a spell that literally can move you, you know, several pixels, at least a couple inches in some scenarios. Uh, to the left, right, up, or down. So, in a sense, nowhere is safe. <laughs> so it makes it tricky. But yeah, Siggy gets a great flash here um, from the abduction. Allows him to set that play up. And now you're kind of wondering, okay, what can he do to close the deal here? The best play is probably to kill the Pegasus. He aims toward the head in order to... Uh, do double damage to the Pegasus, so that was a great play. Uh, when you're dealing with a mounted minion, you have to aim toward the head. If you aim toward the body of the minion, it won't do double damage to the minion. So, DX does that ferocious strike sink as a last resort, doesn't quite get it, and Siggy's able to get the drain. So, really interesting game. Uh, I like how Siggy was able to maintain map control and it all started on turn 2. He created a really uh, strong advantage by simply just making an epic play with the flash, getting DX down to the side with the flightless book, and he's got a lot of ground minions, he doesn't have a lot of space, he has to wait for ritual in order to dig it all, to have space to summon any minions at all, and so yeah, a really well played game by both players really, but especially Siggy, who's able to squeak out this win, and pretty much led from wire to wire because of the advantage that he was able to get on turn two. So, anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this, uh, as I said, Clash of the Titans, these heavyweights going at it to a, to uh, two Kers. So, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.